Welcome to the next lecture in gene regulation in eukaryotes. We will now move on to part two on transcription and RNA processing. As this lecture is quite long, it will be split into two videos. For this lecture, we will describe the structure of a gene. We will look at transcription start and stop sites, promoter and enhancer elements, silencer regions, as well as untranslated regions, and identify the significance of each component in gene regulation. We will then look at the assembly of the basal transcription complex and discuss briefly a mechanism by which long non-coding RNAs can contribute to transcriptional regulation. In section one, we looked at gene regulation at the transcriptional level as well. However, in section one, we looked at how chromatin modifying enzymes are involved in either compressing or opening up chromatin structure. In this lecture, we will look at the process of transcription itself. Transcription is catalyzed by a group of enzymes called RNA polymerases. These enzymes use the DNA strand as a template and create a complementary copy in a growing chain of ribonucleotides. And this results in the transcription of DNA into RNA. In eukaryotes, there are three major RNA polymerases, RNA polymerase 1, 2, and 3. All three RNA polymerases are large, multi-subunit protein complexes, and they have several subunits in common. However, they can be differentiated by their sensitivities to a fungal toxin called alpha-aminitin. As you can see in the table, RNA polymerase 1 is insensitive to alpha-aminitin, POL3 is moderately sensitive, and RNA polymerase 2 is very sensitive to alpha-aminitin. Due to their differential sensitivities to the fungal toxin, studies on the genes that are transcribed by these RNA polymerases have been conducted. We now know that each of these three RNA polymerases are involved in the transcription of different genes. RNA polymerase 1 and 3 are involved in the transcription of ribosomal RNAs. These RNAs are involved in the process of translation. RNA polymerase 2 is the polymerase that we will focus on for this lecture and polymerase 2 is involved in the transcription of protein coding genes. Transcription initiation by RNA pol 2 begins with the formation of a pre-initiation complex. This pre-initiation complex is made up of a number of different transcription factors. TF2A stands for transcription factor for RNA polymerase 2A. And the naming continues with the other transcription factors, TF2B, TF2D, TF2E, TF2F, TF2H, and the mediator is also considered to be a transcription factor. In the assembly of the basal transcription complex, we will talk about the first six general transcription factors. And then we will discuss the role of the mediator later on. The first step in the process of transcription involves recruitment of transcription factor 2D to the Tata box. The Tata box is an AT rich site and it's located 30 nucleotides or approximately 30 nucleotides upstream of the transcription start site. Binding of transcription factor 2D to the Tata box serves as the initial site for assembly of the basal pre-initiation transcription complex. In addition to transcription factor 2D, transcription factor 2A binds to the Tata box along with 2D and facilitates binding of transcription factor 2D to the DNA. After binding of transcription factor 2A and 2D to the Tata box, Transcription factor 2B is then recruited to this complex. Transcription factor 2B has been shown to bind to the opposite strand of DNA that is bound by transcription factor 2A. 
There are specific sequences located on either side of the Tata box called transcription factor 2B response elements, or BREs, located on either side of the Tata box. And this serves as the binding site for transcription factor 2B. BREs, or transcription factor 2B response elements, may be located on either side of the Tata box, on both sides, or only on one side. And they are referred to as either upstream or downstream BREs, based on their location in proximity to the Tata box. Binding of transcription factor 2B to the pre-initiation complex is a crucial step as it is transcription factor 2B that is involved in recruiting RNA polymerase 2 to the pre-initiation complex. RNA polymerase 2 binds to the PIC or pre-initiation complex in combination with transcription factor 2F. Recruitment of transcription factor 2H results in phosphorylation of the RNA polymerase. When RNA polymerase 2 is phosphorylated, it then starts to transcribe RNA. Transcription factor 2F remains associated with the RNA polymerase during the process of transcription. Transcription factors 2A and 2D remain located at the Tata box after RNA pol 2 moves along the DNA strand in order to transcribe the first few nucleotides of DNA into RNA. Due to the fact that transcription factor 2A and 2D remain located at the Tata box, they can serve as binding sites for transcription factor 2B and the remaining members of the pre-initiation complex in order to repeat recruitment of RNA pol 2 and transcription of the same gene. Since transcription factor 2A and 2D remain associated with the Tata box, repeated rounds of transcription of the same gene can occur due to recruitment of the basal transcription complex. Assembly of the basal transcription complex can occur in two different ways. Firstly, it can occur in a sequential manner where transcription factor 2B first binds to 2A and 2D, followed by transcription factor 2F and RNA polymerase 2, which is then subsequently followed by transcription factor 2E and 2H. Alternatively, RNA polymerase 2 has been shown to associate with other members of the basal transcription complex. This is referred to as the RNA polymerase holoenzyme and can be directed to transcription factors 2D and 2A at the Tata box as a holoenzyme in one step as opposed to in a sequential order. In both manners, transcription can be initiated. Now that we have some kind of an idea of how transcription factors need to bind to a promoter in a sequential order and in multi-protein complexes in order to initiate transcription, we will now look at how genes are structured in order to facilitate binding of these proteins to the gene promoter. A gene promoter contains a number of cis-acting DNA elements. Cis-acting DNA elements refer to short DNA sequences that are involved in regulating transcription. And they are called cis-acting DNA elements due to the fact that they are located on the same chromosome. The core promoter elements refer to the elements that are bound by RNA pole 2 and its associated transcription factors. These are located approximately 80 nucleotides upstream of the transcription start site, and it also includes the transcription start site as well. In addition to the core promoter, which is required for binding of RNA polymerase 2 and its associated transcription factors, they are also upstream of proximal promoter elements, which are located approximately 250 nucleotides upstream of the transcription start site. These upstream promoter elements can modulate the efficiency of transcription or the rate of transcription. So where genes are transcribed at a low level versus where they are transcribed at a high level depends on 
the factors that bind to these upstream promoter elements. Now, if we go back to the core promoter, you will see a sequence called INR. INR refers to an initiator sequence, and this can also serve as a binding site for RNA polymerase too. The initiator sequence may be present along with the Tata box, or in some cases, the initiator sequence is sufficient for binding of RNA pol 2 on its own. Upstream promoter elements or cis-acting elements can also affect the rate of transcription of a gene. These two examples discuss two upstream promoter elements called the CAAT box and the GC box. The CAAT box is located approximately 80 nucleotides upstream of the transcription start site and has the consensus sequence CAAT or CCAAT. The GC box is usually located approximately 110 nucleotides upstream of the transcription start site and has the sequence GGGCGG. Studies on the CAAT box and the GC box involving mutations within these regions or in neighboring regions have shown that mutations within the region of the GC box or the CCAAT box correlated with a lower level of transcription. When these mutations were located on either side or close to these regions, transcription levels remained fairly constant. And so these studies can tell us that mutations in the GC box or CCAAT box reduce the rate of transcription, which indicates that they play a role in increasing transcription and transcription initiation. Now that you have an idea of how the basal transcription complex assembles at the promoter and promoter elements that are required for binding, we will go into further details in the next part of this lecture. Thank you.